All right, now I believe this game can or cannot use a controller. Cannot use a controller. Boom. Ooh, music. That's nice. All right. So, already I'm for some reason thinking uh, V V V V V V. Yes, six V's. I know the I know the score here. Anyway, I'm thinking V V V V V V. If only because of the sound design. If you hear that jump, it sounds a lot like V V V V V V V style. Crap, I said seven. But I do like the tutorials. This is how you do tutorials. Very subtle, very writing on the wall. Literally writing on the wall. So two ups, double jump, huzzah, Z, air blower. That's how you do it. This is a solid tutorial. Up and then down. All the conventions follow the same uh, method. So, you know, you, you get the idea immediately of how all this stuff works. Look at that depressed guy right there. Ah! So my mission in life is clearly to uh, fix all these people's hair with my lovely hair dryer. Now I do wonder if I could get back up here if I uh, went ahead and... Oh, can I just... Oh, cool. Uh, I wonder if I could get back up here if I went down. Let's see if these regenerate, because otherwise I'd probably never be able to get this fine lady's hair fixed up. So there's two ways to shoot down. Up in the air you press down, or you hold down and press Z. No. Oh, you just go down faster if you hold and press Z. Okay. Whee. That works. And I feel like it's a little sloppy. I feel like there's a better way to do it. Maybe, uh... Maybe if you... How would you do that? Because gliding is probably what you want to do by default. What if... Uh, I don't know. I guess gliding is the better default uh, method, and holding Z, I guess, is a good way to fall. Because you can't press uh, down to fall faster. That's how you're gliding in the first place. Double tapping it wouldn't make much sense either. So, very standard... Uh, you could call it a collectathon in a way. It's not really a collectathon, it's more like Rayman, you know, where you kind of go around and you free people from cages, but here you're just fixing hair. Uh, it looks like the death animation is... yeah, it's pixel perfect. Usually when things die, you want to be able to just walk right through them, so once something is dying, or in the state of dying or whatever, if they're not going to be able to hurt you, just make them completely walk throughable, you know, completely intangible. I think that the giant, uh, the giant black tints that we got going on up top here. You can't really I'm just jumping up there to show you. I think that that's a little distracting, mainly because you don't need all that dark space. If you wanted that, you probably would have been better off making it completely uh, non-transparent. Making it just a full-on menu that you can't see through. If only because uh, it, it just kind of gets... It's weird. I don't know how to put it. It kind of is throwing me off a little bit. Like it's a darker spot up there until I move into it. I don't know. Uh, but you could probably just get away with not having that at all because you don't really need a black backdrop for uh, things that are colored like that. The only thing that would probably need it is the text, and that already has a black border, which is really hard to see because it's already got the black tint behind it too. So I wouldn't say you need to go that far with it. But overall, I feel like this is going to be a nice little exploration game. Just see what you can do with the mechanics and the amount of uh, land space we've been given. The enemies feel very non-threatening so far. I do not feel like they're even coming close to scaring me. <laughs> Making me get worried. Come on. But again, we get the... I come back to saying that this feels a lot like V V V V V V. Both sound design and exploration mechanics now. It also feels a lot like uh, you have to win the game. I don't know if you guys ever played that. It's a nice free game, totally worth checking out on Steam. That one is another great exploration game where there's a lot of punishing elements to it. This one I like. I like this punishing element that they got going on here with the spikes below. Is that all the way below? Because there could be a hidden thing. Yep, see? I like that. That's good hiding right there. So the map design is actually pretty cool. For the amount of time given, you came up with some pretty good ideas for it. Didn't have enough time to make more interesting enemies. Totally understandable. 48 hour period. You don't get a lot of time to do stuff. Uh, the map design is really good for what we got so far, though. The mechanics all work out nicely. I like gliding with the hair dryer, although, of course, you only have a limited charge while you're in the air. Makes sense. You want to limit that somehow. It'd be nice if there was some kind of indicator of how much you had left. Perhaps, uh, what if the hair dryer started to, uh, the hair dryer itself? What if it started to kind of lose color, I guess, when it's, uh, draining until it's gone? Just so you have some kind of indicator. Imagine it's like a progress bar, bar of gray going down from the tip of the uh, hair dryer. And once it reaches the base of your body, basically, and the whole thing's gray, then you know it's all out. It's always nice to give some kind of indicator that's really obvious, but also... Ah, not in the way. Good checkpoint system. The last person you saved, quote-unquote, is where your last checkpoint is. I like that a lot. Because then you don't have to, in a non-linear game like this, that's really nice. Then you don't have to worry about, like, oh, now i got to start from the beginning. That'd be annoying. 
Ah, uh, turning it red when it heats up. That's a good point, too. So it's overheating. I gotcha. I just figured it was like running out of charge, but then why would landing fix that? What am I thinking? The music's nice. It's got a nice little bass line. It's, uh, it's obviously going to get repetitive after a while, but it serves its purpose nicely. Uh, graphic style works nicely. Limited tile set, obviously. Not a big problem. It gets the point across. I like the use of purples everywhere, actually. It's, uh, it gives the game a nice little frazzle-dazzle charm. Purple and green everywhere. Oh, whoops. Apparently I fell off a little bit too fast. Or into spikes. Pick your poison. Wrong way. Now, it'd be nice if the if I passed by... Uh, if I passed by somebody who I might have already saved, if the checkpoint moved to there. If only because, once again, it's a non-linear game, so if the last person I saved is on the other side of the map of the next last person I have to save, then that's going to be a long way to go if something goes wrong. So obviously you're going to want to try to uh, alleviate that pain somehow. And the best way to go about it is probably going to be just by uh, whoever I pre pass by. Having that way, that's the way back to the tutorial land. And I thought I was worried I wouldn't get back here. Yeah, but that is the nice thing. The music, even though it's repetitive, it doesn't get tiring fast. That's a really good way of putting it. It's just a really quick little, you know, groove jam, I guess you could say. It's not something I would listen to for hours on end, but it's also a short game, so you don't need to listen to it for hours on end. Now, who did I miss? Who needs to get the hair did? I already got your hair did. And I think I got your hair did. Yeah, I think the only thing that I can safely say this game is missing is more enemies. That's probably it. What about down here? Aha! Done! You win! You dazzled all those frazzled heads! Press enter to return to the title! Look at that happy face. That is a happy face. Yeah, so enemy design is probably the only clear uh, missing link here, I'd say. Uh, graphically, I'd give it a solid... Uh, I'd give it a 7, I'd say. It fits a nice little aesthetic that it's got going on. It's not necessarily... Uh, overly complex, but it also doesn't have to be. Granted, the tile sets aren't perfect. I won't pretend that they are. You can see, like, in this little corner piece right here, you can see that doesn't match up. Uh, it was all done, again, 48 hours. So, it fits its theme. It's nothing glamorous, but it does have a nice aesthetic to it, and if you looked at this game, you'd probably immediately know what it is, if only by the character design and those lovely, lovely hairdos. Uh, I would say sound design... I'd give it a, a 9. It seems really generous, but the thing is, as I said, the music doesn't get overly annoying after a while, which is nice. It's not in your face, it's just a nice little bass groove, which is exactly the kind of thing you want to hear in a relaxing platformer like this. You don't want some kind of intense, upbeat, you know, EDM track going or anything like that. Sound design is really, really simple. It's just... it's basically Commodore 64 sounds. Little dings, little boop, boop. Little, little purring of the, uh hair dryer. Little sad death sounds. It's really straightforward. Uh, but yeah, I'd, I'd give it I'd give it a solid score for that. And uh, gameplay? I'd, I'm just coming off the top of my head with all this stuff, but I'd say it's probably a solid uh, 7. It's not long. It's not necessarily... Things like this have been done before, just not necessarily in this style of using like a hair conditioner, or hair dryer, rather. Uh, it's, it's nothing super new. And the, the levels are, the level's good. It's just not long or anything, and it's, uh, a lot of it is just like, hey, I just saw you, hello. So I'm finding collectibles, or rather people, I should say, really quickly, with the exception of this one right here, which could really hide on you if you're not looking. There. So, there are good ideas, it's just that there's not a lot of them. So I feel like more could have been done for the level design. Uh, but yeah, overall, it's a solid base for a more intriguing platformer. You could definitely elongate this, make one gigantic... If you've ever played You Have to Win the Game, then you would know what can be done with a simple base like this. This is the foundation of what could be a really good exploration game. You can even... you can keep the hair theme if you want. You can do whatever you want with it. But the platforming is all there. The exploration mechanics are all there. All it needs are better enemies, better puzzles, and just some more love. That's basically it, just more love. I'd say this game is on a great start. So that's Frazzle Dazzle, ladies and gentlemen. Fun little Ludum Dare competition. 
This is by Hexdai. Thank you very much for submitting this game to us, Hexdai. Uh, yeah, just keep going with it, man. Make, make a really good exploration game out of this. I would be happy to play it again. And I really want to get all these hair dids fixed. These hair dids. There's one more over here. Doesn't count if you don't do it twice. Wait, where is it? Uh-oh. Ah, whatever. Bottom line is, this is Frazzle Dazzle. Thanks a lot for giving us this game, X-Die. 